So with respect to the technologies that are in Africa today, you find that we are dealing with various chunks according to what's happening in the global space. So you have content, you have um, AI and big data and some of these things also going on in another corner. You have cryptocurrencies coming up in another space. And of course you have the digital commerce platforms which are transforming the whole life's journey of the African citizen. You know, we don't want to talk too much about uh, e-government and some of the other public sector stuff. But within those four chunks, you realize there's a lot of commercial opportunity which transforms the quality of the livelihoods of our families, our social units. And it is important that we take steps to leverage this and scale it so that young people can have jobs, so that uh, conversations can be held among uh, aspiring entrepreneurs, so that industry can boom, so that institutions can be renewed. The technologies that are impacting Africa today are not different from what is impacting the global order. So that's why I'm showing you four chunks, four corners of a polygon. You realize that there's content, there's AI and big data, there's also digital commerce and what is going on in that space. And then of course there's cryptocurrencies and other things which are also on the periphery. But what we are saying is that it is not so much a technology as the ability to scale it and to be able to move it to impact livelihoods of families, individuals, youth, and the social units across Africa. It is important that we learn that skill as well. Apart from the technology that we operate, you have to be able to create a certain social economic order in which people are benefiting from some of these things. And the biggest benefit is, of course, innovation. So if we have our skills in all these areas, we create little ventures and prototypes in those areas, and then we scale them so that people can have jobs and aspirations are fulfilled. So in terms of uh, the four big orders, that's where I'll leave it. As far as the usage of all these innovations goes, you realize that if you take my favorite area, you know, big data and AI and so on and so forth, that's the basis on which platforms like Amazon and the telecom networks have been able to scale. Because what you are doing is you are overlaying the data of the consumer on the platform interaction. So everywhere the consumer is, you have an idea what they are doing. The danger of that technology is also when you try to make it impersonal, where you know a person, you know their name, you know their family, but you still want to see them as a data point. And that's, that's also not too good. In terms of the, some of the others, like if you take content, you see businesses like Wireflix and some of the ones that have come through the MES system are leveraging the content proposition because at the end of the day, I always, my favorite example is that, you know, when AT&T tried to make a bid to buy Sony, they could not afford it because you find that content is the wealth, it's the heritage, it's the story. So there are many examples of what is going on in this space, but I think those are the two central ones that illustrate what the point that we are making. When you are implementing technology, what you need is skills. It's very important that as a company, if you want to appropriate or you, you want to make use of some of these um, platforms that we are talking about, you want to integrate them in the way uh, you work, you, you, you hire people who are able to manage the technology, who are able to manage the implementation, who are able to assess the change management regime in which you are, and you are able to uh, drive the benefits because if you don't know what you are doing, any road can lead you there. So it's important that uh, companies invest in the talent base that will be able to embrace these things and make them work. I think that's a major thing that every company needs to get because if you don't have, if, if you have the skills, you don't worry too much about the risks and the vulnerabilities out there because you know people who uh, can face those risks and manage them and contain them. As far as the business goals go, the business goals themselves must include the outputs of innovation. A business would not exist solely to be innovative, but it wants to leverage the outputs of that innovation. So I would imagine that if a, an organization is looking to success, then its goals, its vision, will be driven by the technology that it implements. You see, technology must not be blown out of context. It's a, uh, a point that was abundantly illustrated by one of our food scientists, uh, I think it was Sefa Dede, when he said that when you are boiling kinky and it starts leaking into the fire, what do you do? You cannot take off the hot water 
and seal the pot. And also if you pour that whole kinky into a new pot and go and start heating again, you have spoiled the batch. The taste will not be the same. But our mothers had a way of being able to use some of the paste and then they drop it into the pot, into the water, and it goes down and seals the pot. You find that the water stops going into the fire. That is innovation. So if you don't link it to the things that you know how to do, and you are always looking for a spacecraft, then we, then we struggle with the concept of technology. And that's why I'm saying that I think the vision of the organization itself must build in the outputs of innovation. And then you take technology and support them. And the last example that I will give is that how were we able to put technology in the days of the telecom network into places like Minshia Palace, where we were putting Wi-Fi and so on, putting uh, Wi-Fi access point on tiptoe lane. And so th these are things that you need to understand the ground. Because when you go there, the landlords don't understand what you are doing, but you are able to work with them and get a good result. So I think every organization can integrate technology. So what we are saying is that the technology discussion is a serious discussion and we must separate it from politics, we must separate it from money making. Everything that we do is around the fact that if you are able to build a society that allows the digital technology to provide jobs for young people, then you have a win-win situation where a big company at the apex is making profit and young people at the base are also servicing. I think that job is something that there are skills for and it is important that as a society we identify where those skills are and then fashion an economy that works for everybody. So for me, if we get that right, we have a future that we can rely on. Yeah.